Here are two of the 455 kilohertz IF transformers from the Hammerland radio. These are a type that's just like the kind you'd find in a broadcast radio. It's got a very fragile kind of brittle plastic framework to it. And I've learned that to repair these successfully you need to use vice grips. And uh, let's see, I don't know where, okay, there are the vice grips down there. What you need to do is to clamp from this plane here across, put the vice grips across or in this area so that they're positioned here along the support uh, beams of it. Because if you do it the other way, it can fracture more easily. And I got the drill and I drilled out the rivets here. And I took out all the old mica, I trimmed the, uh, the leads in there, and I put just a dab of super glue uh, on each of the leads here at the bottom on the outside. Right now I'm letting the super glue dry. But I, I had some bad luck with these kind of IF cans in the past, and I think by... And also another thing is you don't want to clamp it too tightly in the vice grips, just enough to hold it. And I've, I kind of held the vice grips up at the end while I did the drill. I can't really demonstrate the drill very well on the camera doing the actual process. But a variable speed drill is a must. And if you go too slowly, it might not work quite like it should. Another, another thing I found is, is to try to kind of get the drill in at a little bit of an angle to kind of shave away at the bottom of the rivet. You don't want to go too slowly, but not too fast, of course, either. It just takes a lot of finesse to, to uh, repair these, and I've had good luck on these two. I've got one more in here that I still have to remove, and uh, it's this one down here. And I made diagrams of all how all the leads came out of them. I went ahead and put the uh, put the first IF transform back in, and this wiring may look a little hokey, but I tried to make it as neat as possible. I didn't want to end up disassembling the entire front panel, so I couldn't actually get a soldering iron right down in there. I had to attach some wires to the IF can before I put it back in the chassis because I couldn't get around this RF control here. And it seems to work just fine. I tried to be as short and as neat on the leads as possible. I just had to extend them all a little bit so I could make the solder joints away from the IF can itself. And it does work when I connected it up to the, uh, to the table radio. It seems to work just fine as far as that stage. So now I'm going to replace those IF cans. Those take 330 picofarad caps um, on, in the IF can, which is more than I usually use on a table radio. Usually I'll use 100 picofarad for an AM stage on just a regular table radio and 22 for uh, FM circuits, 100 for AM. So I got these caps from uh, Mauser, and they're... Uh, Let's see, 330 picofarads at 1,000 volts. I also got some 820 picofarad caps for the uh, 60 kilohertz IF stages. So I'm first going to do the uh, 455 kilohertz stages, and once I get those all put back together, we'll recap the 60. And I'm also going to replace all these old caps just to make sure I've got all good caps in it. These can sometimes, sometimes these will still work okay. They're not as failure prone as straight paper caps. I think they're a paper mylar hybrid. But I, I found that often they can have problems. So while I'm working on it, we'll just replace all these, all these old uh, paper and mylar capacitors as well. And so I'll make another video here once I get all get these IF cans rebuilt.